Welcome back. We are here on Eat Zero, and we're going to look at the commodities market and the precious uh, metals market. But before we can begin, we have to look at the US dollar index because this had uh, such a significant effect on oil prices and also the uh, price of gold. So the US dollar index has been falling uh, all the way back since uh, since end of March. It has been on a downtrend. And uh, now we basically can see that the, um, the US dollar index is appreciating and this has uh, negative effects on uh, gold, price, uh, gold prices and also on oil prices. Um, it has been uh, oversold and that's probably the reason why we see this uh, bounce in the, in the US dollar index. Um, we are in a downtrend and we will be continue in this downtrend as long as the Federal Reserve uh, is uh, pumping uh, cheap dollars into the market. And it will do that for uh, the foreseeable future. But from time to time, we will see these uh, bounces because prices can't just go down. At um, It has to go up at some point. So at this point, we may see a US dollar increase all the way to the 50 moving average. And that is problematic for uh, gold prices and also the people that are bullish on gold and are bullish on oil because there's a, a negative correlation between uh, the US dollar and oil prices and gold prices. Um, so what we have been seeing the last uh, four trading days is that we bottomed out at uh, 91.69 and since then we have basically slowly, gradually um, uh, appreciated in the US dollar index. And if you look at the technical indicators, they're all pointing that we are basically going to go higher. Uh, not It's not moving significantly high, much higher, but it technically may go much higher. Um, I would, the maximum I think this would go up is basically to the 50 moving average. But that will have severe consequences for oil prices and also the gold price. So if you look at what happened to oil. So as I said, US dollar index goes up, oil goes down. And that is pretty much if you want to trade uh, oil or gold and so on, you can't just focus on this chart. You basically have to take uh, take to an account what basically happens with the uh, US dollar index. So uh, we have been trading within this um, area here for months now. Nothing has basically happened until now. We basically, we were expecting the golden cross between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average, but that has not happened yet and probably will not happen because we saw this massive sell-off in the, in the oil prices and um, that is probably due to two things. First of all, the appreciation of the US dollar. And second of all, nobody needs oil. So demand for oil is just, it's just not there. Uh, we shouldn't probably be at this uh, price level at the moment. Um, this is mainly due to that, uh, that uh, OPEC and, um, and the oil company have been basically cutting production substantially. So what we may see in the next coming weeks is that oil will go lower and one place where oil may go to is to the Fibonacci retracements so I would not be surprised if we go all the way down to $30 and then also down to $25 and this kind of depends on how long the US dollar will appreciate um, but this is really really negative for gold, we have been basically slowly going up and we didn't have any substantial uh, growth in all of this uh, period here. So, yeah, I do expect gold to go much lower. If we look at the indicators, it is also really negative. RSI pointing downwards is not oversold yet, 
uh, the Kasik is also in downward trajectory, and the uh, MACD is also um, pointing to lower levels. So my best shot, uh, my, my guess uh, from the technical indicators here, is basically that we'll go um, and retest the $30 level. Uh, I currently don't trade oil at the moment um, because I just it's just not a market that I uh, like trading at at this point. Um, I did trade oil when we were uh, within this range. It was really predictable where basically oil was going and so on. Uh, but as soon as we basically had all of these massive moves and, and all of this unpredictability, um, I technically just don't trade oil. But it is a good indicator or proxy where basically the world economy is at the moment. So I take uh, I do um, uh, take into account where basically oil prices go. So if you look at natural gas. All right, NASDAQ will come later. We look at natural gas, uh, we can see that we got all the way to this level, which was previously all the way back to in, in, um, in October 2019, was uh, a support uh, resistant level. And uh, we have tested it several times, around, uh, around four times now, and that is not really good news for natural gas at this point we'll probably see a substantial pullback at this point before we go higher as long as the weather in the united states or uh, is 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 uh, basically having its heat wave we will see natural gas go higher like we did see all the way back in uh, 2018 where we have had um is uh, a really cold winter so if you weather conditions change uh, substantially, then you basically see uh, a big increase in in uh, in the natural gas price. If it's very warm, it increases. If it gets uh, significantly cold, it also increases. But at this point, I expect us to to uh, pull back, and uh, we may pull back all the way down to uh, the um, uh, thirty eight point two Fibonacci retracement. And that would make sense because then we would also most likely run into the 50 moving average. So we'll have uh, both the uh, 38.2 Fibonacci retracement and the 50 moving average uh, as support. And uh, we probably make something similar to a flag before we technically go higher. So at the moment, just wait for uh, natural gas. It will go higher, but at this point, you'll probably see a pullback. So, copper. So, copper created this uh, really bullish uh, flag pattern here. We have been on a, on a significant bull run uh, ever since uh, at the end of March. And uh, we created this flag, and then we basically shot up uh, even higher. And we did get past this uh, previous uh, resistant level. And at this point, we'll most likely go to this next uh, resistant level, which, has, uh, which is at 31.64. And after that, we'll go to the all-time highs at the 33.30. Uh, it probably will take a really long time. But, but at this point, there's nothing that is um, in the way for um, copper to go higher if we were to break down we would have broken down here that did not happen this was clearly a bullish flag and at this point uh, we'll only grind higher so so at this point uh, buying dips is uh, the best strategy uh, we saw a massive green candle on friday where it grew around three four percent and um, this is not the time to buy the time we basically need a pullback uh, similar to this um, green and a red uh, candle here or this one red red candle here in order to to uh, to enter this market so you look at gold so yeah 
So the reason why I showed you the US dollar index is because it has such a significant effect on gold. So if a US dollar uh, appreciates, that is not a good sign for gold. Um, and uh, we have basically been seeing that the last uh, four trading days since uh, Tuesday. We uh, saw this really uh, negative um, uh, candles here and we basically broke down. Um, didn't do a very good job in gold. I basically entered the market around here because I wasn't expecting a bounce, uh, but we fell uh, even more. And at this point, I am skeptical whether or not we are going to go higher or not. So gold is slowly, uh, slowly getting into this corner here and this triangle. And of course, we expect a lot of support here at the 1900 uh, level. Also, we have the 50 moving average underneath, and we have this uh, support line here. However, if if the US dollar uh, appreciates more and will appreciate uh, throughout next week and probably the next two weeks, I would not be surprised if we broke this support level, even the 50 moving average, and we went all the way down to 1800. I basically want to see this resistance line broken and a clear green candle above this resistance line in order to enter this market again. At this point, I just see it as too risky in order to enter this market. You can basically enter for example, buy, and it drops all the way to 1800. And then you have to wait several weeks before it basically gets back to 2000. Uh, on the other hand, if it basically breaks this uh, resistant uh, line, and you have a green candlestick uh, just above it, uh, clear of this uh, resistant line, then that is a very good indication that will go higher. And then we'll go higher to 2000 and um, 2000, we'll go to 2050, and then we'll go 2100. But at this point, I'm just going to wait. Uh, yes, I'm just going to wait. If you look at the uh, technical indicators, they're all really bearish. Uh, RSI is in the middle, uh, stochastic is pointing downwards, and the, the MACD is also pointing to the, that we're going technically lower. So. I'm just going to wait. The same goes for silver, very similar to gold. We also have this uh, triangle pattern here, so similar to that. And here. So we're trading basically within uh, this uh, triangle and we're going into this corner. So if we break this um, support line here, we'll probably go and uh, test the 50 moving average. Um, and if we break above this uh, resistant line, we'll go, we'll go higher. We'll go to 30 uh, and, and beyond that if that uh, 30 breaks. Um, another way to look at this is basically look at the Fibonacci retracements. We go here and here. We can see that we um, that the first Fibonacci retracement is around 38.2, and this is also where we have the 50 moving average. If you go all the way down there, probably that that would be a fantastic entry. If you go all the way down there, I don't expect us to go down to 50 or anything. That that will be um, that is not expected. So look, Kakoa. So, Kakoa, also, we have been on a bullish run ever since uh, the beginning of July. And we created this uh, bullish pattern here, bullish flag here, and now we basically shut up. Uh, to to uh, We went all the way to uh, 2705. And now we have this massive pullback. And, uh, and I could imagine that we go all the way down to the Fibonacci retracements, which would make a lot of sense because we have the 200 moving average 
right underneath the 38.2. So you should see a lot of resistance in this area. This was also a previous uh, no support in this area. There was also previous support. So if we get close to this area of uh, uh, 24 and 64, then we probably see uh, a bounce from here. Uh, at this point, all the indicators are pointing that we're basically going lower. We were um, overbought, and now the now we're basically uh, RSI is showing downwards. The stochastic is also in downward trajectory, and the MACD is about to cross the signal line, indicating that we'll technically go lower. So, uh, good entry point would be at 2468. Uh, uh, we can also see that the 50 moving average is. Um, is uh, probably going to meet at the same area. So we'll have a, a golden cross within that area. So hope you find this uh, video uh, helpful. You're welcome to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and to click the bell button in order to see our newest videos. Um, good luck and thank you very much.